Hello and welcome to the Ice Guy, brought to you by the National Hockey Now Network. This is the show that takes you into the world of the National Hockey League. Every game, every day, from a betting perspective. With pro sports handicappers, Ian Cameron, Alex B. Smith, and various guests from the world of hockey and sports betting. And now, here's your host, Ian Cameron. Welcome to the Ice Guys, presented by National Hockey Now, Tuesday, May 23rd. And what a show we've got. We've got a full house here on this Tuesday edition. Ian Cameron, Alex B. Smith, and we got not one but two guests with us today. Nikita Kaszurski, our good friend, back with us. And, of course, Sammy P., who was with us on the BetCast not uh, too long ago, is back uh, as well. Sammy, we'll start with you. Good to have you with us. I know you're fresh off doing a, a show, Ness and Bets. You can check that out daily with Sammy, a uh, part of that uh, production. Uh, but how are things with you? How are you enjoying the conference finals? How's it treating you betting wise so far? Ooh, so many questions, so little time. Uh, good to be back, first and foremost. Conference finals have been okay. Uh, hit a little Florida game one. No big deal, no sweat at all. Didn't wait up till two o'clock in the morning. I need Dallas to win the West. That's an Alex Smith special from about a month ago. So. Holding out faith for that one. And uh, I can tell you, Ian, I am a lot more sober than I was the last time I was on this program. That goes for all of us, probably, uh, yeah. at this rate. This is the middle of a Tuesday afternoon, and we were uh, definitely in one uh, a couple of weeks. So that's every bet cast. And that's a great segue, yeah. Sammy, because I was going to wait. But because you mentioned that bet cast, I'm going to throw it out there that we have another one coming up tomorrow night. It'll be game four of the Eastern Conference Finals, uh, Carolina, Florida. The Panthers looking to complete the sweep. I love doing my Panther sound there, but uh, they're looking for the sweep, uh, and we will see if they can get the uh, job done. 8 p.m. Eastern uh, for the BetCast tomorrow night, uh, so make sure you join us for that. Again, DM me at Bobano on Twitter or email Bobano350 at gmail.com, and we'll make sure we get you a spot on the BetCast for game four, which could be the last game of the series for all we know uh, tomorrow night with the uh, Hurricanes and the uh, Panthers. Uh, Nikita Kaszurski back with us again. I know we did a uh, Patreon video uh, interview a couple months ago with Nikita. If you didn't see it, check it out because he talks a lot about the business he's running right now uh, as well uh, and doing great work with that. But I know that's keeping you busy right now, uh, Nikita, in your post-hockey playing days. But uh, how much of the conference finals have you been able to watch and uh, how are things with you currently? Thanks, Ian. I'm glad to be back here. Always a lot of fun uh, being part of your podcast. Um, things have been going busy. I mean, I, I love watching playoff hockey. It's the best time of the year right now. You know, it's uh, keeping me company while I'm working late at night, um, usually in the background, but still very exciting games, a lot of upsets. I love it. Um, I, I like Dallas, that's for sure. You know, I do think they're going to take both games right now back to back. I feel like they got the, the two games going. I like the sound of that. Yeah, they, Vegas is a very strong team for sure. I think he, they, they are the favorites, but I think, you know, Dallas obviously surprised everyone with the season they had. Um, they have a lot of experience out there as well. And I think Vegas has just been the season just so up and down. And But even though they ended up right there at the top, but they're just their season was like with a lot of things going on there with Ico coming in, you know, back from the everything that he's been part of. So I think uh, I think they're maybe their unstable thing will, you know, pop in for a couple of games here. But I think that that game will go six or seven games. But Florida is just oh, interesting. I I'm sure upset my Colorado, so. my Colorado, my <laughs> Colorado lost. My J Jared Bedner lost. I was really cheering for him, and I was cheering for um, Spencer Carberry. He's, you know, my ex-lineman. He's an assistant in Toronto. I was yes. cheering for him to, uh, you know, take that Highly sought after next potential step. head coaching candidate now as well. Yep. He is, yeah. I think it's what, between him and uh, Jeff Halpern, who's the Maryland uh, native right there, you know, for him to take the Capitals job. Um, I don't know what's going to happen now with uh, Toronto GM out and who's going to be the next GM. Are they going to be doing a coaching change or not? So we'll see how things are going. But he, he has had a tremendous career just up and up and up and up and, you know, up and coming and young coach. He's a great guy, absolute beauty. Um, it was a lot of fun playing with him on the same line um he was actually my rookie when i just joined south carolina i joined him and another good friend of mine kelly cup champion team friend. right yeah yeah so it was the yeah. kelly cup champion team we were the third line which we're um 
between me, uh, Spencer Carberry, and another friend of ours, Matt. We call this the best third line in the league ever. <laughs> Self-proclaimed. But uh, we actually had a lot of success the way was playing together. So it was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, he's a great guy. Um, I enjoyed playing with him. We played a couple of years in South Carolina, and then he moved on to coaching and was an assistant coach there. And I'm um, just happy for him how his career has been, you know, just going through juniors and now into AHL and now, you know, going to NHL. So great, great to see him have a great success. Yeah, and of course, uh, he was a part of Sheldon Keefe's staff. Sheldon Keefe's dangling in the wind now with, of course, Kyle Dubas. Uh, getting let go as general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs. So that's going to be interesting to see where not only Keith, but where his assistants end up uh, following what happened in uh, Toronto last week, a very a soap opera drama filled week. It was for the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs uh, last week. Yep. No question about that. It's funny, Nikita, that you mentioned Jeff Halpern, uh, because it's funny after Laviolette got fired by the Washington Capitals, I actually ended up asking Carl Alsner, who was with us last year during the playoffs. I asked him, who do you think should be the new head coach of the Capitals? Because he knows that team well. And Carl Alsner's response to me was Jeff Halpern. I really think Jeff Halpern's the perfect fit. He's a D.C. guy. He's a Maryland area guy. He played for the Washington Capitals. And guess what? Guess where he's been coaching all these years? Yeah, under John Cooper for the Tampa Bay Lightning as an assistant head coach. Is there a better coaching tree to come from these days in the NHL than John Cooper. Uh, it could be a lot worse than that. So you talk about someone that's learned from one of the best. And, you know, we see it all the time in the NFL, how many head coaches in the NFL or assistant coaches in the NFL learn from a great head coach. And that head coach, basically all their assistants end up becoming head coaches at some point. And we're seeing that now with John Cooper in Tampa Bay. Derek Lalone's already a head coach in Detroit. And now it looks like uh, Jeff Halpern. It might be another a John Cooper disciple, if you will, or John Cooper assistant that might be about to become uh, an NHL head coach. So uh, definitely something to keep an eye on. It, it, it definitely has some traction to it that Halpern could end up with the uh, Capitals. Uh, Alex, uh, how are you doing today? Good, good. Yeah, make sure uh, Halpern doesn't spill the beans on any John Cooper secrets like Luan did uh, in that first round when they were, they were playing. You know, you gotta you gotta keep things on keep things quiet if you're gonna you know branch it's, out. It, it is own. funny though. Cooper <laughs> had a problem with what Lalone said, but then I turn around and I'm watching Cooper on my television the other night on TNT as an analyst in Game Two. So right, yeah, know. it's kind of funny to see that. But yeah, but that that'd be interesting to see. Uh, but yeah, you know, last night we're just seeing the continuation of this Cinderella story of the Florida Panthers just you know finding ways to win games in, in, in the craziest of fashions and you know a one nothing game you know you don't expect to see that uh, in today's game even in the playoffs it would be in kind of uh you know slower paced and, and seeing more unders coming in but it's just Carolina just seems to kind of be running out of steam and I said that Carolina needed to get off to the same hot star we saw in, in games one and two it couldn't deviate away from the plan and it just seemed like it was kind of an extension of one of these overtimes uh, to start the game. The first period did not have much energy going one way or the other. Uh, and Florida just able to you know, withstand the storm, get the one goal they needed, continue to get great goaltending and, and play great defense. And now here they are, one win away from hoisting the Prince of Wales trophy and going to the Stanley Cup final. It's absolutely incredible. It is. And we'll begin there, obviously, and talk about last night's game. Then we'll get into Vegas Dallas preview for tonight. But I think when you look at last night's game, if you're Rod Brindamore, you're at your wits end. I mean, you're and he said it in his press conference perfectly after the game. How much more can we do other than put the other than put the puck in the net? That's the glaring exception. Obviously, we got to score a goal, but carrying the play check out shooting the opponent check, you know, not giving Florida very much offensively check really the goal that Reinhardt score was a broken play on a power play. You know, that's about it. That's about the only thing they gave up Carolina five on five, even strength. They did not give Carolina very many high quality, high danger scoring chances. They played a really solid game. And unfortunately they have nothing to show for it, but another L and that's the third game in a row. They're going to walk away from this series thinking we played well enough to win. And how, how the hell are we down three, nothing right now? How the fuck is this possible with the way we've played in this? We haven't played that bad we played pretty good. Actually. I'll tell you why they're down three nothing. It's because this is one of the great runs in playoff, recent playoff memory for me that I've seen out of one goaltender and Sergei Bobrovsky. Now goalie Bob, as we call him, this is now just an exceptional run. There's everything about his game is on point. His positioning, he's square to the shooter, he's cutting down angles. His post to post movement, which I never thought was that great. Clearly, I was wrong because his post to post lateral movement is what made that brilliant save in game two that he had. 
getting post to post and his athleticism is there right now. Reading the play is well there. You know, he's using his mask, you know, basically headbutting a puck out of uh, harm's way to make a save right now. He's just on top of it. He's dialed in. He's, he's seeing the puck very well. They're playing well in front of him. But when the breakdown does happen, and it's been rare for Florida, goalie Bob's been there to uh, clean up the mess. And really, this series comes down to, for Carolina, you got to put the puck in the freaking net. It comes down to that. And Aho, nothing in this series, really. Natchez, my guy, who I've, I've you know lauded this player for this year and last year, and he's gone quiet. You know, their big guns are shooting blanks right now. Carolina and I get it goalie Bob's a big reason why but they've eventually got to pop one in you know it's not that we got chances league we had shots on goal league we hit a few goal posts in this year and they've hit more than a few Carolina in this series goal posts crossbars it's not a we had some posts and some crossbars league it's a we get it done league we've got to find a way to score that's what the production has to be there you know and I know there's always teams that lament chances and shots and we've played so we played the right way and the puck's just not going in but at the end of the day it's going to have to or else you're not winning the series and that's where Carolina is at their game is not is, is in a good spot they're playing well defensively their own goaltender Freddie Anderson has had a solid series but the puck's not going in and somehow I don't care what it takes they've got to correct it or else they could be going home in four straight uh, Sammy what have you seen from this series so far and uh, Florida looking to close it out tomorrow night just a lot of unders, man. I mean, every yep. time you look up, you know, the live total is crawling down and down in these games. And looking ahead to game four, we're already seeing some Vegas numbers at under minus 30 on five in the hook. And, you know, I don't know that it gets to five, but I wouldn't rule it out. It's certainly possible. Um, not a lot of open ice at all in this series. And it's two really good goaltenders and two really strong four checks. And I remember when the series started, I thought this was probably going to be like a six game series. Like Nikita said, you know, probably six games um, obviously looks like it's gonna be a lot shorter than that but I thought five and a half was a pretty low total but low for a reason I thought well if it goes six games we'll probably see four out of six games go under I mean these games have been close in terms of the total like you never had to sweat an under bet now I think also it's something to, to think about because these guys played you know Brandon Montour played an hour of fucking ice time in game one Yep. Right. I mean, these guys are on the ice for 40, 45, 50, some guys almost 60 minutes like that has to wear them down over the course of a series. Right. Like you only get the one night off. So I don't think there's going to be enough time to recharge these batteries to where we're going to get a seven to five game at any point in this series, even with yeah. market correction, even with goals going in. Like you can't make me bet the over five and a half. That's certainly that's true. Now, we do have our famous angle that we've talked about for years coming into play in an elimination game, which is the third period over. But yeah. if you're going to touch an over tomorrow night, that might be the only thing you look at is maybe that third period over If But then again, you've got to, you got to get goals in the third period to go to get that to go over. And right now, Carolina is just not putting pucks in the net, you know, Bobrovsky's just been a complete and utter brick wall uh, back there uh, for the, uh, for the, it's the Bulin wall essentially reminds me of Happy Bulin. Uh, many years ago. That's what I called it. You know, another uh, great Russian goaltender from back in the day. That is the way Bobrovsky's playing right now. So the angle says elimination game bet third period over. And I don't even know if I trust that right now with just the inability to finish that the Carolina Hurricanes have at the moment. A big part of that, of course, being the goaltender. Um, Nikita, your fellow Russian, he's stealing the series right now. He's stealing the show. He's really stealing the headlines across the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs right now, Sergei Bobrovsky. And after that shutout last night, I actually think he's taken the lead over Matthew Kachuk as the Conn Smythe favorite uh, if Florida wins the Stanley Cup. I mean, he's been – I think his impact on this run for the Florida Panthers is becoming uh, – Kachuk's been phenomenal, don't get me wrong. But I think Bobrovsky's impact on getting Florida to this point, Nikita, it's even shining even more than Kachuk. Well, I think so. Yeah, he, he's definitely stepped it up. But I, I feel like if Kachuk is going to keep scoring OT goals, I mean, he might take it. <laughs> yeah, he scored big um, ones. Yep. Oh, yeah, big goals. I mean, um, when they made that trade, I, you know, I was just like, huh, interesting when they traded for him. That was an interesting trade, you know, uh, a hundred point guy, you know, for a hundred point guy, and they just kind of flip flopped. It was very interesting, but wow, what a what an impact he had on Florida. I mean, he was uh, he was the MVP for them for the season, I think, as well. 
And um, I mean, with the goalies, it just goes like that. Like, you know, remembering through just playing back, you know, back in the day when I was playing, it was the same way. It's wherever is the hottest. And I think Florida didn't start with him, right? They, they went with the younger guy. And then they went back Alex in. Lyon began the Boston yeah. series. We have to remember exactly. that. And Bobrovsky yeah. was giving up five goals in some games in that Boston yeah. series as well. It was, it was it, it's totally series, changed yeah. since then. Yeah, they. I think they went in. I think Boston lost that. It's not like Florida won that series. Boston lost that series. But, you know, we're not going to be judging. You know, winner is a winner. And now they, they just completely changed their game. I mean, they're blocking so many shots. That's why they're... You know, obviously he's making the saves. Goalie is, you know, the great goalie is the one who's, you know, stopping the ones that should be going in. You know, not the ones that, yeah, he should be stopping those, but the one that is actually stopping those that, oh, you know, those were supposed to go in. Um, and that's what he's doing now. And for the rest, I mean, they're blocking so many shots. If they weren't blocking, I mean, it wouldn't be 40 shots. It would be like 60 shots or something. Or, you know, when they went to overtime, it would have been almost close to 100 shots. So, BC, you know, it comes together as a puzzle, and I think they're playing a great hockey right now. And BC, they're very high in their success right now, and it's going to be very hard. But one thing you're going for Carolina is they're they're home, you know, for this game number four, and um, or actually they're away for this game number four, and it sucks to be away for that game. But I think I mean, you see, you know, you put everything you've got, and if they win that game, the best part for them is they're going back home. And it's, you know, you just take it game after game. Yep. And I think if they take this one, I think they might take another one at home. So they might actually come back 3-2 back to Florida. I would say that that could be a possibility unless Florida plays and, you know, Bobrovsky plays in another terrific game you know, defensively and in, in the net. This is one of those series where it's 3 nothing Florida right now. It could be 3 nothing Carolina or at the very least 2-1 to one Carolina. That is yeah. how razor thin the Definitely. margin has been uh, in this series. But again, that's neither here nor there at this point. Fact of the right. matter is Florida's got three wins on the board. And I said this yesterday, Nikita and Sammy on the show, is that nobody cares right now about whether this blue line was mediocre during that. And I didn't think much of the Florida blue line. And I thought coming into this series, it was a mismatch for Carolina's blue line over Florida's. Because after Barkov, or uh, not Barkov, after Montour and Ekblad and Forsling, it's a big drop off to the next three defensemen for the Florida Panthers, where Carolina one through six is pretty steady and they've got quite a bit of depth back there. But, you know, you can say what you want about how these guys played in the regular season and it wasn't always great, but they're getting like all world performances playing over their heads, playing much better than they have in the past. Obviously, that's the case with Josh Mahura and Radko Gudis and some of these depth defensemen for Florida. But the fact is they're playing this way right now. Uh, and that's why they 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 upped their game at the right time of year. Bobrovsky's upped his game at the right time of year. How many times did I see him get pulled this year, Sergei Bobrovsky, and have injuries and then the illness late in the season? And they were so unsure. Paul Maurice was so unsure of Sergei Bobrovsky's health and Sergei Bobrovsky's ability and consistency in that down the stretch of the regular season that I'm convinced he was ready to return from that illness long before he finally did in the Boston series. He was eligible to play long before that. They just didn't have the confidence in him. That is how mediocre his season was, Sergei Bobrovsky. That Alex well, Lyon like that. was the guy that they trusted to win them th those games down the stretch just to get into the damn playoffs. And then sure enough, you know, Lyon finally has that slip up against Boston. I think the Marshawn goal in that series, what was it, game two, I believe, which just is right through him. He's probably got to stop it. And then Bobrovsky gets the call and doesn't look back. But then all like even at that moment, they're like, uh-oh, we got to put Bob in. Bob's had a mediocre season, not great, not consistent, coming off injury and a long illness. How's he going to play? I have no clue. And now fast forward to May 23rd today and look at Sergei fucking Bobrovsky, man. Unbelievable. <laughs> what an incredible run out of almost nowhere. Not that we didn't think he could play this way because we saw it years ago when he won a Vesna, but this year with such mediocrity from this guy for three quarters of the season, now you see what he's doing? Unreal. That's the word. Unreal. And what makes it, forget, what makes mean, it even... Oh, I was, well, see if you can say Nikita. What I was just mentioning, I mean, don't forget this team won a President's Cup last year, so and the team hasn't changed that much. So, you know, it was just, I think... 
you know, their whole identity, trying to find the identity and the goalie situation, I think that came in, but now they're all back. Um, they bought in. I think that was this game where Paul Maurice flipped out uh, on the players. I think that was maybe the turning point of that. Um, That's of when the team. run started. Yeah, exactly. Yep. You know, that was the that was the one. I think he had fed up with just ups and downs all over the place. And I think guys bought in. You know, and once the team buys in, and once they're all in, you know, for the one, I think that's dangerous. Especially you know the team like that that won the Presidents Cup. Last yeah. Although and, I gotta and give we, hell, I gotta give Nikita some hell though, because that's a pet peeve of mine. I hear someone call it the President's Cup. That's golf. That's golf. The President's, <laughs> Cup. President's Trophy. Cup. There you go. President's Trophy. Trophy. There we go. There we there go. go. Yeah, I'm the hockey guy. <laughs> <laughs> but just to tag in with Bobrovsky though, what makes this run even more incredible is that the fact that you know this was kind of documented a, a few years ago in his career about how he loses about ten to fifteen pounds, uh, you know, basically like in every game. And the fact that he was, you know, in there and playing this four overtime game to still have enough energy to make these big time saves in game two and in game three, as opposed to where we saw Frederick Anderson play game one, had to sit out game two to go at Ronta uh, and then go back to Anderson. That just makes it kind of even a, a more of a remarkable story. It's kind of interesting. You talk about, you know, who would edge out whom in the Con Smythe uh, potential. It's really neck and neck if you kind of throw that in, too, just how bad of a regular season he had. You know what he goes through just to play the game on on a uh, average night, and and you know like I said, just coming out of nowhere to you know have this vintage form. It, it's something you know interesting to watch for sure. You say ten pounds a game? Yeah, yeah. You see, if you see a player in like, the locker room, ten he looks, pounds I mean, he in looks, a game. Yeah, like he looks like super sick whenever he takes his pads and stuff off because he's lost so much weight. Like it's 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 wild. I need the Bobrovsky diet after hearing that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah. I should just pretend to play goal and chug a bunch of water like he always talks about, too. <laughs> chug bottles of water and maybe I'll lose some beer weight that I've gained yeah, here it, in the it's last amazing. Uh, year or two. Just, just go in the backyard or something. Ask like some kid, you know, uh, neighbor kid to start clapping stones at you, man, for like there a couple go. hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll get our workout in. We'll, we'll go on the Bobrovsky diet and we'll chug some water, <laughs> uh, chug multiple bottles of water, and we'll see if it works on me 15 pounds. No, in my luck, it won't. Uh, that's just my uh, two cents on it. But uh, just an incredible run by the uh, Panthers. And, of course, tomorrow night is game four. It's our bet cast uh, tomorrow night. So we're looking forward to that. Could be the last game uh, of the uh, series uh, for all we know. And I want to point this out. Uh, I became a much bigger fan of Sergei Bobrovsky last night when I heard the interview he did uh, on TNT after the uh, game. He was talking with the crew, and Henrik Lundqvist got to ask him the first question. And his immediate response to the question was, it's great to talk to you, Henrik. It's a privilege to talk to you. We had some great battles in the past. And remember, back in his Jackets days and his Flyers days, he'd play the Rangers quite a bit. And, of course, Henrik Lundqvist was the a great goaltender for them for years. And he said, you know, uh, just great words he had, kind words, respectful words for Lundqvist, saying the great battles we had. And uh, it's just great to be able to talk to you. And you had a great career. And, you know, you're one of the – I'm honored to have faced a bunch of great goalies in my career that have helped make me better. And he mentioned Lundqvist in that uh, sentence as well. So that was just cool. You could tell that uh, – Bobrovsky's got some class uh, to him. And uh, clearly we could see that last night in his uh, post-game interview. That was awesome to see that. Comes with age, the wisdom, man. That is. I think it is, too. And I think he knows he's had some ups and downs, too. That'll humble you, too. Uh, if he was not yeah. here, maybe he's just general, genuinely nice from day one. But, man, when you have the ups and downs he's had, too, it makes you even more gracious and respectful of, you know, your opportunity and who you've played against in the past and getting to this point and now one win away from uh, a Stanley Cup final. Uh, just uh, remarkable uh, stuff from uh, Sergei Bobrovsky. And gr just great to hear him so courteous to Hank Lundquist last night. Well, it's always it's the best way to learn on your mistakes or, you know, or your disappointments or your failures. That's the best way to learn. I mean, when you're always successful and it comes easy to you, it's going to be easy to hard. You know, it's going to be hard to um, learn and, you know, be better as a person and everything. So, um so I think that's what that's what it is. That's the best way. Ice X in our chat. Oh, nice live betcast tomorrow night of the first NHL sweep. Uh, there you go. Unbelievable. We're going to get into Vegas, Dallas, but uh, in right now as well. But before, um, and uh, game three. Actually, we'll do the uh, Gramco ad first. But I want to mention that 
we still have a chance for NBA and NHL conference finals across the board to be a four game sweep. How insane is that? That both conference finals and both the major winter sports, the uh, NHL and NBA, uh, might both have conference finals sweeps. Uh, we've got one. Uh, obviously, Denver Nuggets taking down the Lakers. We're one game away from Florida sweeping Carolina. We could be one game away from uh, Vegas sweeping Dallas if the Golden Knights win again tonight. And of course, we're also one away from the Boston Celtics after and Sammy uh, working for Nesson. I'm sure there's people uh, in that Nesson studio just fit to be tied after that disgrace they saw from the Celtics uh, the other night, a complete laydown effort uh, against the uh, Miami Heat uh, on uh, Sunday night. Just terrible. Uh, Barkley ripped them to shreds, and rightfully so, uh, on TNT throughout that broadcast. Um, just awful. Uh, and they could get swept tonight uh, against the Heat. So, so much for these great conference finals, right? I mean, we could be looking at sweeps everywhere, NHL uh, and NBA. We will be back in just a moment to talk Game 3 tonight, Vegas and Dallas. Uh, shout out to everyone watching. Hit the like button and shout out to our podcast listeners as well. Back in a moment, and we'll tee it up. Game three, Western Conference Finals, uh, Vegas and Dallas coming up after we hear from Gramco. Support for the Ice Gas is brought to you by Gramco. Whether you or your team's game is on the field, screen, racetrack, court, or the ice, Gramco is for the game. Grown by farmers who spent years developing premium hemp genetics, Gramco provides customers with consistent quality Delta 8 THC products ready for any occasion. Gramco currently offers numerous Delta 8 products, including vape cartridges, disposable vapes, pre-rolls, gummies, wake and bake coffee, and more. Gramco offers an enjoyable, legal high delivered discreetly and directly to you. Gramco is also available at many American retailers as well. You can get the best Delta 8 cannabis products on the market shipped quickly and discreetly from Gramco. And if you visit www.thegramco.com, Use promo code ICEGUYS. You will get 20% off of every order. And any order that's on the site over $50 will be shipped free with standard shipping. So live elevated with Gramco and check out their wonderful Delta 8 products today. All right, uh, it is time to talk Game 3 Western Conference Finals. Uh, Vegas, Dallas, we've got the Dallas Stars minus 145 current home favorites here in Game 3. Uh, the total 5.5 across the uh, board. This is another series where we talked about how Carolina down 3-0. They're wondering, how the hell can we be down 3 nothing? We haven't played that badly. Dallas probably feels that way about being down 2 nothing, and they'll certainly feel that way about Game 2. I don't think they were at their best in Game 1. I actually think Vegas did deserve to win Game 1 uh, of this series. But Game 2, Dallas was the better team for two and a half periods, if not more than that. They kept Vegas at the end of the second period had barely 12 shots on goal. You talk about a defensive Rembrandt, a defensive Picasso on the road. The Dallas Stars were putting one up. Uh, in game two of that series, they were up two to one. Uh, Jason Robertson is starting to find his offensive life once again uh, here in the uh, conference finals after having a tough first two rounds. They're up two to one. They're not even giving Vegas a whole lot of breathing room and time and space to make plays with the puck in the third period as well. And when there was an opportunity, Jake Ottinger was there to make a save. So we get down inside five minutes to go. And Ryan Suter decides to have a big of a brain cramp with the puck in his own end, just careless to rim it around to no one in particular, but Jack Eichel, who ends up with a beautiful centering pass to Jonathan Marcheseau, puts it in, no chance for Ottinger. And just like that one gaffe, in otherwise a terrific defensive team effort from the Dallas Stars, and the game is tied 2-2. And at that moment, I'm like, wow, Vegas has a chance to steal this one when Dallas has been controlling the play for almost the entirety of the game. And wouldn't you know it, bad line change in overtime. Colin Miller is probably the guy that was responsible most for it. Just you can't be that slow getting off the ice and it changing at that moment when Vegas is buzzing in the offensive zone. And sure enough, there's no one there to take out Chandler Stevenson, who gets the loose puck, the rebound, bangs it in past Ottinger for the overtime winner. Just a really painful loss for the Dallas Stars. And we're going to find out how much resolve and resilience this group has to pick themselves up off the mat, feeling they should probably be 1-1 in this series at worst and instead be down 2 nothing here in Game 3. But they are going back home, and that's the difference, where Carolina's got to go on the road down 2 nothing. At least Dallas, they get to come back home here to the American Airlines Center 
uh, in Dallas. Uh, the home ice has been pretty solid for them. Remember, they won a game seven here uh, at home against the Seattle Kraken uh, in the uh, second round. Um, I do expect this Dallas team's got enough veterans on it where you shouldn't have to wonder or question what kind of start they're going to have tonight. The start's going to be on fire. I really do believe that for the Dallas Stars. But it's going to be another question of kind of what Carolina's had issues with in this series is scoring goals to either take a lead or extend a lead. Dallas had issues with that in game two. You know, it was two to one, two to one, two to one. They never got that third goal. They never got that cushion. And that, I think, ended up hurting them in the end. So I think they're going to carry the play tonight, early in the game especially, uh, with this sense of urgency down 0-2 on home ice. But they've got to convert it into scoring uh, and put in the puck in the net. You know, And I'll give Aiden Hill all the credit for playing outstanding hockey, but he's still not Marty Brodeur. You know, he's got to be someone that if you're the Dallas Stars, get traffic in front of him, you know, make sure you take some vision away. And the way you do that is, again, make sure you get bodies to the net, make sure you get to the inside of the ice and get those loose pucks. Vegas makes it difficult to get to those areas. That's how good defensively they are. That one through six they have on the blue line, I've said it over and over again how good it is. And Dallas can't match them there. But what Dallas's forwards need to do get to the middle of the ice. And I'm looking at a couple in particular that have not done it as well lately in this series. Uh, Tyler Sagan in particular, need a little more from him uh, so far. Robertson's finally scoring, but you need him to step up. You know, it actually was a quiet two games for Joe Pavelski, and I I don't want to criticize him too much. He's had a great, great playoffs overall, and he's done great in big games in his past, but he's even got to elevate just a little bit more because I thought he was a little quiet for Joe Pavelski standards you know, the first two games of this series. But for Vegas, Eichel continues to play well. Marcia So has been just outstanding. They've gotten depth contributions offensively from Stone and from Chandler Stevenson and from Nicholas Waugh. I mean, there's a different player that can beat you every night for the Vegas Golden Knights. And this is where, if you're Dallas, you need Tyler Sagan and Mason Marchment, Wyatt Johnston. I know he's a rookie. And I know, hey, as the longer the playoff goes, you wonder if these rookie players, you know, they hit a wall and, you know, they're eventually going to tire out and maybe not produce as well. But we're still going to ask that of Wyatt Johnston because he's been that good for the Dallas Stars this year. Elevate your game if you can. The team needs you tonight uh, here in game three. You know, make sure you're drawing penalties. I don't think the Dallas Stars uh, know just how important it is. I think they do know, but enacting it on the ice that you need to draw penalties because your power play is lethal. And even we saw in game two, Dallas connected with the power play. That's what gave them the two to one lead Their Your power play is terrific. I think it's probably after Edmonton, you know, one of the better power plays in the NHL, the Dallas stars. So make sure you're winning foot race situations, make sure you're going that extra mile to win a puck battle, give yourself an opportunity to get a few calls get the power play, get the man advantage, and then cash in with it because you have a power play that's excellent. And Vegas's penalty kill still isn't great. It's mediocre. You know, they're here in spite of a marginal penalty kill, the Vegas Golden. They're not a great penalty killing team. It's weird that they're an excellent five-on-five defensive team, but they're not a great penalty killing team. So if you're Dallas, get on the power play, win those puck battles, and that's exactly how. Uh, you're going to get back into the series. I've got one Dallas bet tonight and one Dallas bet only. It's the first period look. And again, I'm not comfortable in the minus 145 price with Dallas, even though I do lean that way that they win game three, they get back into the series. I just don't love that number, minus 145, and what's been a tight series. Uh, even in the games Vegas is controlled, you know, especially here against Vegas, the last game in particular, they still end up in a tight game at the end. The draw certainly could get there. We've seen two overtime games so far. Uh, finally, we didn't have an overtime game last night, but I still wouldn't talk anyone out of the draw plus 350 or so at uh, FanDuel. But I'm going to go with that first period puck line plus 170 at bet 365 for that uh, Dallas Stars first period puck line. It's a good price. I expect a great first 20 minutes from the Dallas Stars, and I'd much prefer that. Either Dallas first period puck line or Dallas to score the first goal. It could be either of those situations, either of those bets I would sign off on uh, here tonight in this game. And just from a value standpoint, I ask, would you rather have Dallas minus 145 full game money line or Dallas to win the first period where I expect them to be on their toes? I expect them to be strong at plus 170 to win the first period. I'll take the plus 170. Thank you.
as far as value is concerned. So Dallas first period puck line for me, plus 170. I think I might sprinkle a little bit on this game to go over the total. Game one went over, game two went under. Is this going to be one of those zigzag theories as far as the total is concerned? To me, if Dallas is going to win, you probably have a chance maybe to see a few more goals than you saw uh, in game two. So the over five and a half probably will uh, have a smaller play on that as well. Uh, Alex, we'll start with you. Game three, West Finals, Vegas, Dallas. Yeah, I'm right there with you on that Vegas uh, first period puck line. I, I, I knew I was going to attack first period in some form or fashion. I wasn't sure if I was going to go first period over or just Dallas with the puck line. And like I said, I got plus 160 this morning. So I'm seeing better prices popping up now. Like I said, you got plus 170. I saw plus 170 offshore as well. So Dallas has to come out firing hot in the first 20 minutes. You have to win the first period here. You have to build that confidence and momentum back. And like you said, it wasn't that they played a terrible game in game two and lost. And, and even game one, where you know that was a spot that I actually thought Dallas was going to get blown out and, and that I loved Vegas to win uh game one. I made that you know uh bet pre-series Vegas to win game one and Dallas to win the series. And I just thought it was the same kind of feel of you know the last two series when Dallas hit on the road that first game, they just didn't have their wits about them, and especially when you added that coming in off of a, a tough game seven win. It just seemed like the momentum wouldn't be there in game one, but they actually played tough hung around uh, in that contest. So made me feel great about game two. Okay. They can come out and definitely even things up and get things back on track heading home. But like you said, just a couple of mistakes, you know, lead to them uh, losing that contest. So now I think this is a team we talked about the resiliency they've had all year. We talk about how great Ottinger plays when he's off of a, uh, you know, a loss. And like I said, these haven't been uh, bad games on his part. So he's still been playing decent enough to, you know, keep a team in into it, but, you need Joe Pavelski to wake up again. He's a guy that actually would look to take a, a goal prop at a plus 180. I'm seeing at Ben MGM. Uh, he's definitely the guy that, you know, we saw how much, uh, you know, the team missed him when he missed those games with a couple of injuries in that series uh, against Minnesota. He's the driving force behind everything. I think he's the reason that JR looks a little bit better uh, the way he's been playing in, in these last couple of games. He gets everything facilitated on that power play. So when Pavelski's on fire, the rest of this offense is on fire, and that's what they're going to need tonight. So I'm going Dallas first period puck line, laying the half goal. I said I got plus 160, but by all means, try to grab the best of that number. And also go with Joe Pavelski, anytime goal scorer at plus 180. It feels to me like a Joe Pavelski night. If Dallas is going to have a strong start, find some offense, he's going to be part of it. And he's had a quiet series so far. It's you know it's, it's it's kind of weird to say it because we're not used to this from Pavelski. who's just had what did he have eight goals in the Seattle series, uh, and in the Minnesota series he played very well. But it's, he's been quiet in the first two games, uncharacteristically quiet. I expect that to change though. Somehow, some way, I find especially in games where the team's back is against the wall. Going back to when he was with San Jose, he'd make an impact. Win or lose, he'd find a way to score a goal, a big goal, an important goal. So, yeah, Pavelski props worth a look. You might want to ride the hot hand that is Jason Robertson. You know what it's like with those great goal scorers. You know, couldn't couldn't buy a goal in the first two rounds. And now all of a sudden, we've seen uh, J-Rob scoring back-to-back -back goals here for the uh, Dallas Stars, back-to-back -back games for the uh, Dallas Stars here in the conference finals. And, you know, when you're looking at his a goal prop price here, it's plus 185, you know, in some spots. And I know there's been games this year where his goal scorer prop is like plus 130. You know, so they probably because of the struggles of the first two rounds, you're now getting a little bit of a better price on Robertson as far as goal props. So, yeah, definitely Pavelski, Carl, um, Pavelski, Robertson and Hints. I think if you're going to focus in on goal props tonight, those are the three guys that are going to have to bring it here for the uh, Dallas Stars to try to get their uh, goal scoring production back on track uh, and get them back into this uh, series. As far as uh, Vegas goes tonight. You know, Marsh is so shots on goal just has been ridiculous how much he's been going over his shots props. So you could go in that direction. You can go a goal prop and a point prop for him because his production's been excellent uh, as of late. We keep seeing Chandler Stevenson end up getting uh, on the score sheet, even just to get a point for him is minus 120. It's not a bad price uh, whatsoever. Uh, so those are a couple props I would look at as far as um, Vegas goes. And I would mentioned Wyatt Johnston. And yes, he has had a quiet series so far, like, kind of like Pavelski, who we just talked about. But I think I might sprinkle on plus 320 Wyatt Johnston anytime goal score because now they've pushed him back above that plus 300 again. You know, when he was scoring those few goals against Seattle, they were starting to get, you know, plus 280. 
uh, and below with his goal prop. Now it's above plus 300 again. So it's a really, really good value price again on a guy that, look, his goal won the game seven against Seattle. That was the game winning goal, that beautiful goal. He beat out an icing and he went roof job on Grubauer in that seventh game. It was a terrific goal. This rookie can play. Yeah, I'm worried maybe he's hitting a physical wall for a young kid who's not used to playing this many games. Um, but I'll take a shot at that price. He finds the back of the net tonight. Wyatt Johnston for the uh, Dallas Stars. Sammy P., what do you think here? Vegas, Dallas. Dallas regulation, not too scared, honestly, at all. Five and two at home in the postseason, not a big sample size. But I think we look at where this game opened and where it is now. You know, on the money line, it was minus 130 at Circa. And now we're seeing Chris 150 and, you know, 411 is 153. So we're seeing some some crawling, right? It's crawling up to that 150 range. And if that's the case, that tells me respected play is on Dallas. And, and odds are good if Dallas wins. Dallas wins in regulation. So, I'm going to turn that favorite into an underdog. Look at Dallas in regulation at plus 15. And uh, I'm not going to lie, I have I have already logged into some of the apps and looked at Ottinger shutout at 10 to 1. Now, I haven't done anything with it yet, but would we be surprised if this was 2 0 Dallas, 3 0 Dallas? I certainly wouldn't. Um, I think you could throw a little bit of peanuts on uh, Jake Ottinger shutout at 10 to one. They need him in the biggest of ways. And uh, hell, I've made worse bets for sure than a 10 to one pop on a guy to shut a team out. Who in his most recent game in this building, which was again, game seven against Seattle in the second round, what was he six seconds away from a shutout? <laughs> the shutout or 12 seconds, it got ruined with like 12 or 15 seconds left. Seattle was down two nothing. They scored, they made it two one with like 15 seconds. It was that close from a shutout in game seven. And we know Ottinger, when he's on his game, can threaten to uh, keep the uh, goals against at one or less. So uh, that's not a bad price, 10 to 1, in a spot where we would expect him to play well. Now, if not only one loss, but back-to-back losses, which has really not happened all that much for him or for the Dallas Stars. Nikita, what are you thinking here tonight, game three? Well, I think um, I think Dallas takes it, but I think it's going to be a, a scary start for, for Dallas. I don't know. They might come out, but... You know, when you have all these emotions and stuff, you know, when you're losing 2-0 um, and you're coming out, you know, hot and all of a sudden some random bounce goes in. And I can see that scenario played out in the first period and it just gets really quiet. And because a lot of times I feel like it's emotionally, yeah, you want to come out, but you're losing two games. So a lot of times, even if you go trying to be like, go, 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 you're still mindful of, you know, like if you lose, it's probably that's it you know 3-0 if you lose this game so a lot of a lot of times psychology goes into it of making mistakes you know you're trying to be too careful um you're not feeling too loose you just you know you're trying to score and score first you know that's one of the things that people will be talking about you know they got to score first you know they got to put the pressure on and more pucks to the net and stuff like that i mean they could have won um you said johnson has the great opportunity doesn't score they go right back and they score a goal so that could have been one one going back in there it's just a matter of execution and you know scoring timely goals um i think jamie ben steps up you know, has a couple in there, you know, he's a big captain. I think Pavelski, as you said, it's tough to get in front of the net with a big D like Vegas has. They can skate. They're very big. They're very um, experienced team. Um, and like you said, the power play, I mean, it's tough to draw, to draw. Yeah. You got to get to the dirty areas and stuff like that. But you know, if, if they can skate well and they're big, it's very tough to get in there and to draw something. Um, with those guys, I mean, just getting in the puck, throwing a lot of pucks on the net, keep it simple. Um, and I think power play, I mean, Vegas is the least penalized team out there in the, in the National Hockey League. I think that was... The they were points. during the regular season, for sure. They've been penalized yeah. a little bit more in the playoffs, but uh, in the regular um, season, they were. They took a lot of penalties with, uh, with Edmonton, um, but just because, I mean, look how fast they are. Yeah. Um, I feel like they just, they just had more depth, um, than Edmonton did, you know, even though Edmonton was just ridiculous on the power play, but that's, that's, uh, I feel like there was one line they didn't have Edmonton didn't have that, that depth that, uh, Vegas has. So, I mean, I still think Dallas wins here because, you know, in the games that, you know, they had in Vegas is very even games, you know, on shots and chances, I feel like. So they're very even. And I think maybe going back to 
Dallas's side. I think they might, you know, take these two games. Um, as long as they don't, you know, they don't get down on themselves, you know, if all of a sudden Vegas scores like two goals in the first period or something, because then it's going to get really quiet and very, very scary. Um, you know, I was expecting Vegas to be more dominant at home, but they weren't. So that's one of the things that I feel like that's why people are betting on Dallas back home. Very even game in Vegas. And I believe that, yeah, I'm just, you know, anticipating that something like that might happen and we'll see what, how it changes or not. There's still that little aura of discomfort for me betting Dallas tonight for one very good reason. And it's going back to the other series where game two, Carolina down one, nothing, you know, played a really solid game, still ended up losing down two nothing. Carolina last night played a very good game again in game three, outplayed, outchanced Florida. What do they have to show for it? Another loss. So yeah, I'm thinking to myself, this may be the, the inside out Stanley Cup playoffs, or at least the inside out conference finals where the team that gets outplayed wins every game, you know, and maybe we're going to see something like that here uh, throughout this series, because it's just at the end of the day, you can control it and control the flow and have the puck a lot more often than your opponent. But if you're not going to make uh, hay with it and, and score enough and, can, and capitalize enough on those chances, you're going to have a tough time. Uh, there is no question uh, about that. So well, that's the key for Dallas. Not only generate your chances, get to the middle of the ice, which they do have to do a better job, Nikita. You're right. They do. I mean, I don't want to hear about how the Vegas defense is so great. And they are great at it. They're great at cutting off the middle of the ice and clearing the front of the net so that Aiden Hill no. can make saves. They're great at it. They were great at it at the end of the Edmonton series. You want to know why Edmonton couldn't get shit done in game six of that series, the closeout game? Vegas was clearing them out. You're not getting a second chance. You're not getting a third chance. So maybe they're going to clear out Dallas, and Dallas just can't get to those areas of the ice and get to that front of the net. But Dallas has to find a way, or else they're going to lose the series, just like Edmonton did. So I don't want to, you know, Vegas is doing a great job, but Dallas can't just say, well, Vegas is doing a great job. We can't get there. No, because if you have that mindset, you're not going to win this series. You've somehow got to get there. You've somehow got to get to the front of the net, get those loose pucks, and get it done. And that's the difference between yep. Dallas in their spot and Carolina in their spot. How many times have we talked about Carolina getting, you know, out shooting teams by a two to one margin of losing during the regular season? Or, yep. or, you know, they looked like the better team for 45 to 50 minutes and then they made a couple of stakes lost. Like this is kind of Carolina's calling card whenever they do lose games. For Dallas, that's not the case. Usually when they get they lose, it's you know, they just can, aren't completely focused or Ottinger's having an off night and, and then they're able to bounce back from that. So the resiliency is 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 a lot stronger with this Dallas bunch than it is Carolina just throughout history where we've seen Carolina just kind of have these games where they sit, they get outworked and then they just kind of, you know, just kind of hold their hands up and say, Well, you know, we got outplayed and not really able to to do much uh, you know, coming back the next game and the next couple of games after it. Dallas, I think we'll see that that fight and that pushback from them. Yeah, and it'll be a domino effect too, because if Dallas gets to the traffic areas, they get loose pucks, they're going to draw holding penalties and hooking penalties and cross checking penalties in front of the net because they're in those areas where Vegas is trying to clear them out. And if they're getting there, Vegas is going to have to take a, a slashing penalty or a cross checking or a hooking penalty in front and put that dangerous Dallas power play, uh, you know, on the ice, which is, you know, it's a domino effect. If they get to those tough areas, They'll draw penalties and they'll probably score goals and they'll probably win this hockey game and get right back in this series. So that is the number one element for Dallas. They've got to do that tonight. No periphery play. No more stuck to the outside. Get in front of Aiden Hill and make it happen. That's going to be their ticket to get back into this series tonight here uh, in uh, game three. Uh, before we wrap up the show uh, and get to best bets and wrap this uh, show up, we got to get Sammy P's take here on this. It's, it's, I know it's hockey, but we do have Boston. Celtics, Miami Heat tonight, uh, game four, Eastern Conference Finals. To me, and I, look, I'm an all sports better and handicapper, even though it's just a hockey show. Everybody knows I handicap basketball, football, baseball, all the other major sports. I've already placed my Miami money line bet. I think this is done, uh, this series. Uh, I, 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 if Boston didn't fight for me in game three, how the hell am I going to, how the fuck am I going to trust them to fight tonight uh, here in game four? Uh, with a Miami team, do you think Miami wants to make an unnecessary, unneeded, unwanted trip back to Boston for a game five when Denver's already wrapped up the West Finals and and punched their ticket to the NBA Finals? I don't think so. I think Jimmy Butler's the leader that's going to make sure all the troops follow. The general leads, the troops will follow. Shaq always says that. 
Jimmy Butler will ensure this team has the focus necessary to win a closeout game tonight, uh, I believe, at on their home court in game four. Sammy, what do you think of that game tonight? I hope it ends tonight. Shit. I mean, Alex and I have Miami at 950 to win the East. Uh, we did it after Jimmy didn't play in game two against the Knicks. Knicks evened it up 1-1 and went back to South Beach. And I was like, look, they're going to win three and four and might win it in five. And then we'll see what happens. But look, man, you know, Boston all season has been inconsistent when it comes to adversity. And every time they get punched in the mouth, they just they don't get off the mat. And nothing has pointed me in that direction that that will change. You know what I mean? Jason Tatum cares more about his damn haircut than he does about, you know, playing defense. And Jalen Brown wants to be the guy, but he's not the guy. And then Marcus Smart thinks he's the guy. And it's just, it's a bad mix. And I think it's clear that the drop-off in coaching is 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 big, you know, to go from Ime Udoka, who say what you want about him off the court, on the court, he was a wizard. He was able to put guys in the right spots and they were a well-coached team last year. They overachieved because of the coaching. This year, the talent is not getting along. Guys are not playing well together. It's your turn, then it's my turn, then it's Nikita's turn, then it's Alex's turn, and we're all going to get our shots up, but we're not going to pass the ball to each other. I mean, they don't even fucking pass to each other anymore. No. And uh, it's it's been kind of weird to watch, honestly, because they have all the talent in the world, but the talent's not working together. And I think you you blame the stars, but you also can blame the coach. I mean, he is getting worked by Eric Spolscher right now, and I don't think there's any meat left on the bone. Maybe Boston wins tonight, but – they're not winning four straight. It's not happening. Yeah, I mean, it's it's difficult, you know, to see that they're going to extend this uh, series even beyond tonight because it was just such a pathetic effort uh, the other night. I'm just seeing them jack up threes just down the court, throw up the worst shot they can find, the first shot they can find, the worst shot they can find the other night. And uh, it's very appropriate Jason Tatum was wearing that white uh, suit there the other night to the game, the color white, the same color as, the, as a ghost, the kind, the likes of which he was uh, in Sunday night. Uh, in game three, a ghost, and his little buddy Jalen Brown was as well. Holy shit, what a horrible series he's had, especially shooting the three ball. So uh, tough times for the uh, tough times for Boston sports this springtime with the Bruins and the Celtics combined. If the Celtics do indeed end up getting swept tonight, very very difficult to see these teams. They both thought maybe we could go back to back two championships here this year with the Bruins and the Celtics, and sure enough, neither one may get to the uh, final. Uh, when it's uh, all said and done. Uh, great stuff. We will wrap up the show with best bets coming up. Hit the like button. We appreciate it. A reminder, patreon.com slash ice guys, just $10 a month. Uh, make sure you sign up there. Goalie charts, totals charts, the daily ice guys show betting card, bonus video content, many more uh, bonus uh, features on the way as well. So check it out. Patreon.com slash ice guys, just $10 a month. Also, this is the last day to save 15% off everything at the Ice Guys store. It's iceguys.myspreadshop.com. Everything's back in stock, all the shirts, all the caps, all the hoodies, everything. So check that out and save 15% off. The link is right at the top uh, once you get to the page, iceguys.myspreadshop.com. All right, great stuff. We'll wrap up the show with best bets in just a second after we hear from Manscaped. Support for the Ice Guys is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Their products are precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped's performance package, the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Join over 7 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping. With the promo code ICEGUYS, that's promo code I-C-E-G-U-Y-S at manscaped.com. If my math is correct, it's about 14 million balls that you can preserve. The Performance Package 4.0 is the complete accessory package to take care of everything that is required. You've got, of course, the Lawnmower 4.0 takes care of your facial hair, uh, and among other things, uh, you've got, of course, the Weed Whacker. I'm approaching 40. Nose hair has become a major issue. It pisses the hell out of me. I need to take care of that shit, and the Weed Whacker can help you do that. Both of these products, waterproof and a 4000K LED spotlight for a more precise shave, and you'll also be able to take care of those delicate areas with the ball toner with the ball deodorant keep you smelling good looking good and feeling good down in the nether regions this complete performance package 4.0 will take care of everything for you for all you guys out there and it's courtesy of our good friends at manscape.com so get 20 percent off and free shipping with the promo code ice guys at manscape.com that's 20 percent off with free shipping at manscape.com and use promo code ICE Guys. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job 
with Manscaped. All right, it is time for Best Bets here to wrap up this uh, Tuesday edition of the Ice Guys. We thank our special guests. Great to have a full show. Sammy P, Nikita Kaszurski with us. Alex, we'll start with you. What do you like for Best Bet? Yeah, let's go with Joe Pavelski to get a goal here at plus 180. That's the price I was able to get at uh, Bet MGM. Uh, like I said, he, you know, he's had a great postseason, you know, after uh, you know getting knocked out with a concussion to come back, have a tremendous series against Seattle. He's got to step up and, and be part of, of the rush, be part of uh, this offensive attack to get Dallas back into the series. And I think plus 180 is a more than fair enough price here. So let's go for the Pride of Plover, Wisconsin, Joe Pavelski, to get a goal at plus 180. That's my best bet for this game three. All right. I was on it in game two. Obviously didn't find the back of the net. Dallas lost, but I agree. I'm coming back to that. And Alex making it his best bet. Joe Pavelski, Dallas Stars, to score a goal, plus 180. Uh, Alex P. Smith with his best bet. Uh, Sammy P., thanks for joining us. Uh, What do you got for best bet? Dallas Stars, regulation, plus 115. I think Ottinger stands on his head tonight. I think Dallas takes care of business. They've been so good in this series. 0-2, 0-2, though, because they haven't scored a goal in overtime. I'm not going to hold that against them. Get the last change, too. That's going to help as well. Maybe line up some guys against some of Vegas' top guys. A lot of signs here pointing to Dallas. I'm not going to lay 145, 150, though. Let's regulation it at plus money. There you go. Dallas Stars in regulation, plus 110 for Sammy P with his uh, best bet. Nikita, great stuff as always. Uh, what do you got tonight? I'm sure Dallas, I'm sure in some form it sounds like. <laughs> well, I think Dallas wins, um, and then I say Jamie Ben has a goal, uh, maybe even a couple of points in there. So there you go. That's my bet. There you go, and, the captain uh, for the uh, Dallas Stars, Jamie Ben, getting it done. And look, he scored in Game One, and he scored the big tying goal uh, in mm-hmm. Game One to make it three-three. So there is, you know, he's definitely a good cho- choice, someone to step up when the team needs him. Uh, and Jamie Ben to score a goal and Dallas to win the game from Nikita for his uh, best bet. And my best bet is going to be that first period puck line on the Dallas Stars. I think that's the best way to approach it. It's the best price, the best value, plus 170, uh, Dallas Stars first period puck line. There's actually a very good point by Sammy about the last line change. Vegas is a stickler of a team as far as line matchups are concerned. You know, that's a that's definitely a Bruce Cassidy thing. So to get away from some of the matchups that may not be as advantageous for the Dallas Stars tonight, being on home ice, that could be a benefit to them uh, for sure. So for me, it's Stars first period puck line minus a half plus 170 for best bet. A great show. Uh, we appreciate everyone in the chat. Remember, our bet cast for game four Eastern Conference finals is tomorrow night, Carolina, Florida, 8 p.m. Eastern. Join us. We'll live bet the game. We'll watch the game. Drinking encouraged, all that good shit. It's a bar and a pub atmosphere, as Sammy P will uh, attest to. He's been on the BetCast with us before. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, make sure you join us tomorrow night for another Ice Guys a Live uh, BetCast. So, look, we've had two great guests. We'll give them a chance to have some final closing thoughts and last words. Sammy P, thanks for joining us. The Boston Celtics are dead, and that's it. That's all I got. There you go. That's all you got. <laughs> Boston Celtics. Uh, breaking news there. Boston Celtics are, are dead. Uh, they were dead two nights ago. And uh, as last I checked, dead people don't come back to life. So uh, I, I expect you to be right about that. Nikita, great stuff. We wish you well, of course, with what you're doing off the ice these days. Um, and thanks for joining us again. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. It was always a lot of fun to talk about hockey, some betting. Um, appreciate you uh, having me on here. And I think uh, – Stanley Cup Finals would be Florida, obviously, now. Oh, you're giving us a prediction. Stanley Cup Finals. Okay, who's winning it? That's the easy part. You know, picking the Cup Final at this rate with one team game away from a sweep. Who do you think's winning it of the four teams left? Vegas. Vegas, all right. There we go. Yeah, Vegas wins it. The only thing (laughs) – I like that, Sammy. But the only thing that it is is the goalie, the goalie. You know, always the goalies. Yeah. Yeah. Adam – you know, not like in that situation if he's going against Bob, but I feel like, um, I don't know. It depends how many games Vegas plays. If Florida has a lot of rest, yeah, I think Florida might have a chance there. But uh, if Vegas finishes it off at the same time, they're just way too powerful, and way too strong, I feel like, for Florida to handle right now. There you go. Sancho in our chat. Nikita's a dope name. So there you go. 
uh, Nikita, a dope name, says Sancho. So there you go, uh, liking, uh, liking your first name. Thanks, for, uh, Sancho's. Yeah. It's got that cool sound to it, I guess. But uh, no, great stuff. Um, that's a wrap. A great show. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, everyone in the YouTube chat, thanks for joining us. Hit the like button on the way out. A reminder, the Ice Guys is live Monday to Friday. 2 p.m. Eastern, Saturdays at noon Eastern. Uh, and if you can't watch the show live, download the Ice Guys podcast in audio form on all major podcast platforms, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and more. Download the Ice Guys podcast when you can't watch the show live. For Alex P. Smith and our special guests, Sammy P., Nikita Kaszurski, I'm Ian Cameron. Have a great Tuesday night. Enjoy Game 3 of the Western Conference Finals, and we'll see you tomorrow on Wednesday for another edition of the Ice Guys presented by National Hockey Now. 